coming up on Dr. 90210. When a former big brother. You're too handsome is the problem. And a former Brady. Well, yeah, and you're, and you're pretty. Oh, thank you. Get together. Something I call manscaping. Things get hairy. I would always fantasize about being in a hot tub with one of the Brady kids. Very hairy. I just thought it would be Marsha. Ladies, if he hasn't seen your vagina yet, he's going to see it soon. Dr. David Mellon! I decided to throw a party for my dad, and the theme is the dating game. I invited my friend Will Kirby to host the game. I wanted my dad to understand the concept of not judging people based on their looks. It kind of backfired on me. There's three beautiful women behind this curtain, and I understand you have some questions for them. That Absolutely. Right? That's right. Let's get started. All right. And ladies, if you were a car, what kind of car would you be and why? I would be a Yugo, and you would go home with me. <laughs> All right, ladies, what I want to know is, what is your best body asset? That's right, number one. I would have to say um, my butt. <laughs> All right. Bachelorette number three. Bachelorette number three. My eyes. Well, she's out. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding, no. just kidding. What? I like a young woman, uh, someone vibrant, sexy, hot, full of life. I do like a woman to make me laugh. Let's do this. Why don't you decide one of them to be eliminated? And I'm going to eliminate number two. Bachelorette number two, her name is Becky. She's a teacher. Who else do you want to eliminate? I'm going to eliminate number three. Number three, I'm so sorry. Her name is Mona Lisa. She's a jewelry <laughs> designer. Bachelorette number one, please come meet Dr. Matlock. Oh my God. Her name is Cole. She is a manager Whoa. of a salon and spa. <laughs> the type of girls that Jessica found for me, she knows those girls weren't my type, but she just did it anyway. It doesn't bother me that I'm not going to find the one at the dating game. There's a lot of women out there. There's a lot of fish in the sea. I'm hoping that, you know, you can meet someone. See, if I that date multiple women. No, just, if you just see one woman, yeah. you know, in a serious relationship, you know, you might be happy. I'm seeing six women. What's wrong with that? <laughs> All right, come on, let's go mingle. Mendes. I'm 48 years old and I'm going to Dr. Gary Modicky for breast reconstruction surgery. I'm a breast cancer survivor and I've had nine reconstructive surgeries because I still don't look like I have natural breasts. The Relay for Life is a 24-hour walkathon, and the survivors kick it off with the first lap. Today we have Greta Mendez. So Greta, would you please come up? I'm a third generation breast cancer patient, but I will be the first survivor in my family. I never met my grandmother because she died before I was able to meet her. Flash forward 40 years, my mother has breast cancer. My grandmother had breast cancer and passed away within nine months. My mother neglected to do a mammogram or self-examination at all. In 2003, I had my annual mammogram and they realized there was a problem. They scheduled me to see a surgeon, and within a very short number of weeks, I'd had a radical mastectomy. It's no piece of cake, but the fact is you have to fight. You have to want to live in order to move forward. I didn't intend to have my children grow up without me and not ever get to know my grandchildren. So I decided at that moment, 
I would spend every ounce of my energy fighting this cancer. For me, I'm not gonna wait until the last minute to fight for every one of our loved ones. I intend to take back my life and my femininity. I'm hoping that with Dr. Modicke's procedure, I'll finally get the breasts that I want so that I will be able to look and feel completely natural. So thank you very much. Thank you. Here's some chips and some sandwich guys. One at a time, one at a time. My name is Violet, and I'm 36 years old, and I'm gonna go see Dr. Matlock to get laser vaginal rejuvenation. Tatiana, when you were born, you were so big. You're Tatiana the Titanic. Now, when you were born, Anthony, you were Hercules. Big old baby. When I had my first child, which I referred to as Hercules, he weighed 10 pounds, and he just did a job on me. Five years later, I had my daughter, Tatiana. She was 12 pounds. She basically just took care of the rest of me there. I haven't been the same since. It's not my fault I ripped you up. Anthony, I think you're just a little smart ass. That's what you are. <laughs> Anthony, you get to clean up. Forget this. <laughs> Giving birth to two huge children really has destroyed my life as far as my sexual life and my personal life. So how was your day today? Done. But won't happy for you and for me. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> He's a huge proponent for like Love no it. hair on the yes. whole body. We live in a world, an age of technology where you don't have to have hair these days. Do you have any hair whatsoever? Ah, uh, well, um, no, I don't. I'm Chris Knight, I'm 49 years old, and I'm getting hair removal by Dr. Kirby because I guess he wants me to be as hairless as him. The hair out of my ears and my nose is just not, it's just not useful. Exactly. A little more in my head would be okay. No one ever said, you know what I like on that guy? Hairy ears. I'm an actor best known for my childhood role of Peter Brady on The Brady Bunch, the last time I was hairless. Can no you push, can I push it up and have it come out my head? <laughs> I have a laser in there, you wanna do a little laser work? A little manscaping? Chris and I are really good friends, but more importantly, we're also business partners. Chris is growing hair in strange places, inside the nose, back of the neck, even the ears. I'm gonna do a little laser hair removal on him, something I call manscaping. All right, I'll do it. Actually, it's something I needed to do. Nose hair, ears hair, bottom of the neck, so you don't get any ingrown hair, and we'll do back of the neck. With this procedure, I'll no longer notice that I have hair growing out of my ears at the very last minute, then taking a razor to it and slicing my ear wide open, stuffing tissue in my ear, and leaving the house with a tissue in my head. Uh, that kind of embarrassment won't happen anymore. I love it. You just want to get me in that chair. Let's get you in there. <laughs> Blast me. Once I get this procedure done, it's going to complete me as a woman. Now for the big question, how tight do you want to be? I'm here to see Dr. Modicky about my breast reconstruction. I'm hoping this will be lucky number 10.
I want to thank each and every one of you for coming tonight to my pink pajama martini party. I tonight gathered all my closest friends for my bye bye bad boobs, hello good boobs party. I have decided though, I want Carmen Electra's boobs. Oh yeah! yeah. <laughs> because she has a beautiful set. When I got my diagnosis of cancer, I decided that I would have a bilateral mastectomy. When I saw myself after the removal of all of the breast tissue, that's when it hit me emotionally. And I felt like I looked like a man. Well, you all know that I've had issues and I've had many surgeries to try and correct the problems that I've had. And I still have, but I'm going to have them fixed. My current breasts, they're very painful. I have constant muscle spasms throughout my chest, my back, and now it's actually progressing into my knees. After the mastectomy, I remember the world's most wonderful husband, and he knew I felt really self-conscious and I didn't feel good about myself. And that night, when we went to bed, he hugged me and he says, I don't care what they do to you or how your body looks, I will always love you. When he saw my scars, he kissed them and said, it doesn't matter. I could never have gotten through this without him. But he's stuck with me for life now. Hey, I'm waiting for those Carmen Electra's. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Violet, how are you doing? Good, how are you doing? I'm here to see Dr. Matlock today for my consult, and I'm feeling a little nervous, but excited at the same time. What's your main concern? Well, because I had two kids. My first baby was 10 pounds, and my second baby was 12 pounds. I'm here because it's just not the same anymore. Right. Around 30 million American women suffer from symptoms of VAT relaxation, so you're not alone. It's a very big problem. What we can do is, with our laser VAT rejuvenation is correct this. We want to enhance sexual gratification also. Living with this problem for 11 years has been difficult. Once I get this procedure done, it's just going to change my life dramatically. It's going to complete me as a woman. So what women really want in this area here externally, they want a youthful appearance. And that's what we're going to do. We want her to look like a 16 year old. OK? Good? Yes. Sounds good. Okay, very good. Violet is a young lady. She had two large babies, and she has severe vaginal relaxation. So she's an excellent candidate for laser vaginal rejuvenation. We can really help her. So what we're going to do, I'm going to bring the muscles back together and tighten the muscles and support tissues. By doing all this, we're going to enhance vaginal muscle tone control. We'll effectively decrease the internal diameter. Now, for the big question, how tight do you want to be? Uh, probably 18. 18, that's good. What do you think? That's fun. Okay. <laughs> I'm very excited that he's going to be able to make me feel like I'm 18 years old again. All Thank right, dear. You. Okay. Hello. Hi, Dr. Monarchy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I'm here today to see Dr. Gary Monarchy about my breast reconstruction. Tell me a little bit about you and uh, why you're here to see me. Well, um, I'm a third generation breast cancer patient. Um, I intend to be the first survivor. I've had nine reconstructive surgeries and they have not gone well. Nine? Nine. Okay. This will be lucky number 10, I'm hoping. Why don't we take a look? Okay. Okay. And uh, we'll see what we can do to make them better for you. Okay. In meeting Greta, I feel that she's a real survivor and a fighter. She's been through a lot of surgery and I feel it's an honor and a privilege to help women like her get their lives back, and move on from breast cancer. You have breasts here, but do they feel or look like normal breasts? The answer probably would be no, right? Absolutely. So there's a difference between reconstructing a breast and making it look like a ball and making it look like a breast. So my goal will be to make them look like a breast. So breast cancer, you, you had it, you got rid of it, let's get you back some breasts. Okay. I feel so confident after meeting with Dr. Modicky that he is going to do the very best job and I can put this behind.